What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Eclectic Mechanics Workshop. In today's video, we're going to be showing you guys how to make an archery target out of some screws, some 2x4s, and great stuff foam. Yep, just those three ingredients, and you can make yourself an archery target. Let's get into it. This is going to be fun. So what you're going to need for this project are some three inch deck screws. Mine are gold plated torque screws and about three cans of great stuff, gaps and cracks so that it expands the most effectively and six six foot two by fours. That will give you all the length of lumber you will need to make this project happen. So the first thing we're going to do with our two by fours is we're going to take two two by fours and set them out because these are going to make up the legs of the archery target itself. And these, that's all you need to do with them. You just set them off to the side. You don't even need to cut them. The next two, they'll end up also not being cut because these are going to make up the target sides. And the last two, you're actually going to cut one of them perfectly in half, and that will be what makes up the top and bottom of the target. And the last one you're gonna cut into fourths, and that will be the support struts that go from the side posts down to the base. So like I said, you'll be cutting the first board clean in half, three feet right in the center. So for our second board that we'll be cutting, we're gonna be cutting four 18 inch segments out of it. And that will make up the braces that really hold the target firm on its base legs. So we'll mark it at 18 inches, we'll mark it at 36 inches, and 54 inches. And that are three spots that we'll be cutting. I forgot to mention that you'll want to get pressure treated lumber because that will help it stand up to the elements much better than regular lumber. So for the next step, you're going to be placing the boards that will be the three foot boards that will be making up the archery foam target itself. It'll be making up the framework of it. And for that, you're going to Lay out your tape measure on one of your six foot boards and you're gonna measure at 35 and a quarter at, and at 36 and three quarters. And that will mark exactly where you want your bottom two by four to be for when you're placing the screws. I've already marked it on that one. So let's come over here and measure it out. We'll move it to 35 and a quarter and 36 and three quarters. And the reason why we go at those spots is because then the board is right, or the board is centered with the three foot mark. And remember that two by fours are not exactly two inches by four inches. They are, if you hold the, me the measuring tape up to them, they are one and a half inches by three and a half inches. So make sure you remember that when you're putting the when you're putting this together, if you are sizing your target differently. I am doing targets that are nice even three foot across by roughly three feet tall. And the reason why I'm not specific on the height is because I'm making sure that my two by fours are nice and square, but one, the one two by four is up on the top and one is spaced evenly in the center. So it's not gonna be exactly 30, 36 inches tall, but it will be 36 inches wide, so I can fit a whole different host of target sizes on it. 
And again, this is not gonna be a regulation target size. This is a target for a camp that will be able to handle longevity. And the nice thing with these targets is that when the great stuff wears out, you can punch it out and carve out all the old stuff, lay this target down, and just foam it up again. So now we're gonna use a tarp to help form the great stuff so it has a nice solid base and to make it easy to peel it off and just leave the great stuff behind when to act as the body of the tarp. Now let's put in the great stuff. Well, it's a good thing I bought three more cans of great stuff gaps and cracks than I thought I would need because I'm definitely going to need them. I'm only about a quarter of the way up on the two by fours and I'm probably going to need even more great stuff than that. But the good news is, is that this stuff expands quite a bit. So let's see what happens when we add three more cans. this great stuff than I thought I would. This is three cans in and I think we got about two thirds of the, of the target filled up. I got a couple more cans that I was able to forage from somewhere else and I didn't have to run into town to get them. So this stuff still should be tacky. So this new stuff should be accepted and be, become one with the rest of the foam quite nicely. I think I finally found my total requirement of great stuff foam. I used a total of nine cans to this point and uh, I thought it was going to expand a lot more than it did. <clears throat> but here we are at nine cans and I think this ought to be it because there's three more, three fresh cans of the foam on top here and I think we'll be ready to, it will expand enough to where we can smooth it down um, with a uh, with a, a handsaw or something like that to cut the excess off or we could just leave it as is like I just thought of this idea peel the peel the tarps off the back when it's done and dry and use that as the face of the target we're gonna see how this works I'm not actually certain how well it's gonna work um, but uh, in another YouTube video that I found that a guy made a target very similar to this and it worked quite nicely so We'll let this dry out and then we'll get to the next step right after this. Good morning, YouTube. It is the next morning. Um, I peeled my tarps off the back of the target after the front side had hardened. And then I hung a halogen light over top of it, over top of the target to let it uh, dry much more effectively. As you can see, there's a nice stark difference between the color of this foam and of this foam. And let me tell you, this stuff has hardened up quite nicely. I was very skeptical at first, but about it actually having enough rigidity to be a target, but it works. So um, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step, and that is uh, putting on the, the legs here, or the actual stand part of it. And uh, so let's get into it. Uh, Now for our next project, we're going to take our support braces, we're going to cut 45 degree angles off the sides 
or off the very ends of them. And then we'll be putting, we'll be mounting them up like this. So that they'll be all nice and add some structural integrity to it so that these targets won't go anywhere. Let's get to chopping. Now let's go ahead and install our braces and they will go like this. And you're gonna just want them to be nice and flush with the ground, but also nice and flush with our sideboards here. Let's get to it. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is your homemade archery target. I will actually be including in this video before I go ahead and edit it all together, I'll actually go ahead and shoot the target a couple of times to show off its rigidity and just how well it's gonna work. You might, if you're building this for yourself, want to put a brace between the legs just to kind of give them a little extra, extra structural integrity. You'll excuse my little dyslexia getting in there, but um, this is it. I mean, this is a pretty rigid structure itself. I mean, you can tell, you can hear the thump that, that this foam lets off and just give you an idea. I mean, that's a better part of four or five inches thick uh, when all is said and done. I mean, because this side is roughly flat and this side bulges the better part of about an inch or so. So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the, com or leave them in the comments below. I'd love to answer those for you. But let's go ahead and get out to my field where I can actually test this out. Let's head over there. All right, guys. We're on location and we're ready to test out our new target. So let, before I actually get to shooting, let me show you what I'm shooting with. First, uh, for arrows, I'm just using simple Easton recreational arrows. Nothing fancy. They're not broad. They're not broadheads because you'd tear the snot out of the out of the the great stuff foam if you were to do that. And for my bow, I am using a Matthews Genesis compound bow. It's probably it's very humble. It's only like a 15, maybe 20 pound draw. Um, it's a very, very light draw and I'm probably being kind on that, on how much uh, draw it has to it. But uh, we're gonna set up real quick. We're gonna have a few shots at that target. I'll get, you, I'll get some front side shots and then I'll show you some uh, view from the back to see how far these arrows make it through. Let's start shooting. Look at that. I don't even care if I if I hit the center of the target. I'm just looking to see how well it holds up to the arrows. Man, that works great. Not bad at all. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the homemade archery target. I am thoroughly impressed with how well the Great Stuff foam held up against these arrows. Yes, they're not the pro hunting archery bows, but that's not what this is for. This is for like a camp or something that might want to just make a simple target that they can reuse and reuse. And that's the nice thing about this great stuff foam is that when it finally wears out from being shot at by arrows so many times, you could just carve that great stuff out, lay it down on on, on, on some tarps and just re-foam it. And this was nine cans of foam. 
earlier in the video I said it, it would only take about three cans. <laughs> that was definitely wrong. This this is gonna take nine cans to do, but it's well worth it. They're only three bucks at Menards per can, but it's an awesome target. And let me show you the back up close before we wrap up the video. This is this was one of the simple straight shaft arrows, and that only came about an inch through. This one's the same type of arrow, and that went about three inches. But this one's a little bit a little bit shorter of an arrow, and that's about five or six inches. And you can see it came out of one of the narrower parts of the foam. But that's pretty impressive considering, again, this is just great stuff insulating foam. And you have a nice, relatively smooth surface. And you can tape any target up here. I would recommend masking tape or very light duty duct tape because that's what's gonna, you, what, what is going to hold your target up without tearing it, tearing it up and giving your foam the best longevity. Um, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and please hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell down below. It really means a bunch to me when you guys like my videos, and please give me uh, comments below, and if you have any questions about the target, comment away. I love answering the questions, and I, I might actually get a bunch of ideas for these upcoming projects from you guys, so please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. We'll talk to you then.